So far we have been talking about the B cells. Now let's move our focus to the T cells. They also play a very important role in the immune system. So let's talk, first of all, talk about T cells and also the receptor, the receptor, which is called T cell receptor, abbreviated as TCR. First of all, I would like to tell you that there are two types of T cells, cytotoxic T cells and helper T cells. There are actually more, but we are going to focus on these two. T cells, cytotoxic T cells can eliminate intracellular pathogens. We'll see the mechanism of that subsequently. So, these T cells can recognize antigen which is partly degraded and it, it is present as short, small fragments on the surface of the cells displayed with the help of MHC. MHC basically is abbreviation for Major Histocompatibility Complex. We will talk about this in more detail, but first of all, let us talk about the T cells and their receptor. Effector cytotoxic T cells directly kill cells infected with the virus or some other intracellular pathogen. Effector T cells stimulate the responses of other cells which play an important role in the immune system, for example, macrophages, B cells, and they can also regulate cytotoxic T cells. So, this is the cellular part of immunity we are talking about. The humoral part we have already talked about, which was the B cell mediated. Now, let's look at the structure of T cell receptor, abbreviated TCR. It's a heterodimer of alpha and beta chains. It is a glycoprotein, not an immunoglobin, primarily. The two polypeptide chains, each encoded by separate genes, which is homologous to BCR or B cell receptor, which suggests that these genes, these proteins may have a common ancestor, some prototype gene which evolved into these TCRs and BCRs that diverged at some point in the evolution. Just like B cell receptors or BCRs, there is an extracellular domain of TCR which is sticking outside the cell. There is an intracellular domain of these receptors. Here is, for example, the extracellular domain. This is the cytoplasmic domain of this receptor. And here is a stretch of hydrophobic amino acids which are embedded in the plasma membrane. T cell receptor is also responsible for recognizing several different molecules, antigens being displayed by the, with the help of MHC molecules. So, we also have to have large diversity of these molecules. TCR is also, diversity of TCR molecules is also generated uh, by a similar process as we saw in B cell receptor or uh, how the variable region of B cell receptor or the antibodies uh, is joined by different gene segments and that results diversity of these antibody molecules. T cell receptor also has a similar process. It goes through by joining different gene segments, which results in diversity of the T cell receptor. Again, the segments are V, D and J segments that, that we have talked about previously uh, in case of antibodies. And their rearrangement occurs in of these segments at the DNA level. T cell receptors recognize fragments of antigen Whereas the B cells, their antibody can recognize the intact antigen. And also, here's a difference, there is a big difference between BCR and TCR, is that TCR cannot recognize the antigen on its own. It needs help from MHC molecules. That molecules display these antigens. Another difference is that T cells, binding of T cell with antigen located on the surface of MHC molecules, this interaction is very weak. In order to stabilize these, this interaction, there are co-receptors that help stabilize this interaction. We will talk about those co-receptors later on, but let us move on. Now, I would like to talk about certain proteins that are present around the TCR or T-cell receptor. These are non-covalently linked 
and these are made up of gamma, delta, epsilon subunits and two zeta chains. CD3 and zeta chains are invariable. They do not bind the antigen. Instead, they interact with the constant region of the TCR and participate in signal transduction. So once TCR has recognized an antigen in association with MHC molecule, there will be a conformational change and this change will be read by the CD3 cluster composed of gamma, delta and epsilon subunits and associated zeta chains you can see on this uh, slide. And once this change has been read by these molecules, they will communicate this to the other rest of the cellular machinery. As I said that TCR uh, interaction with antigen is very weak and it requires presence of co-receptors that stabilize this interaction. Here you can see on the slide that we have helper T cell or cytotoxic T cells which have this TCR which is shown in black here. TCR is interacting with the antigen which is which is little red dot on your screen. This is the foreign antigen and this green molecule here is the MHC molecule which is grabbing, again, as I've mentioned earlier, antigens are presented to T cells by antigen-presenting cells. These antigen-presenting cells, first of all, phagocytose foreign entities and pathogens, they degrade them and grab little pieces of these pathogens and display them on their surface. We will talk about uh, MSC molecules later on, but here I just want to point out that the antigen-presenting cell will present the antigen to T cell with in association with MHC molecule. So there are two types of T cells, cytotoxic T cells and helper T cells. So cytotoxic T cells, as the name implies, are going to go and destroy cells which have been infected by an intracellular pathogen. As we have said, helper T cells help other cells mediate an immune response. Toxic T cells have a co-receptor which is CD8 mentioned right here. The CD8 is the co-receptor in cytotoxic T cells. It stabilizes the interaction of TCR and MHC uh, molecule uh, which is carrying a foreign antigen. Here I would like to mention again point out that the co-receptors bind the invariable region of the, uh, of the MHC molecule which is shown here in green. Uh, we have we are seeing this interaction at right, right around here. So this interaction is at the invariable region of the MHC molecule. The purpose again is stabilizing this interaction. Additionally, the co-receptors they also help transmit the signal. Uh, the cytoplasmic domain of these receptors, co-receptors, have associated with other proteins that once the interaction of TCR MHC molecule is confirmed uh, because that our MHC was, molecule was carrying a foreign antigen, there is a conformational change which is read by a protein in the cytoplasm, LCK protein. It binds the cytoplasmic domain of the co-receptor, whether it is CD4 or CD8. It gets activated. It phosphorylates, LCK protein phosphorylates the cytoplasmic domains of the CD3 cluster and the zeta chains. Once they are phosphorylated, ZAP70 binds these uh, phosphorylated regions of CD3 clusters and zeta chains. At this site, the LCK again phosphorylates the ZAP70 protein molecules. ZAP70 molecules, once they are phosphorylated, they phosphorylate other protein docking sites in the plasma membrane, which are embedded in the plasma membrane, which serve as a docking site and activate mechanisms that generate IP3 molecule and also they mediate signaling through MAP kinase pathways. The affinity, uh, as I've mentioned earlier, of T cell receptor for peptide MHC complex to an antigen presenting cell or target cell is usually too low to mediate a functional interaction between these two cells by itself. The accessory receptors I have already mentioned are CD3 
4 and CD8 molecules. These co-receptors do not bind the foreign antigen, uh, but they are, and they are invariant, and they bind the MHC molecules. So again, this shows a little bit more detailed view of uh, this interaction that we have talked about. Here is the CD3 cluster, right here. CD cluster is associated with TCR. Here's the TCR right here, alpha and beta chains. And we also have uh, the zeta chains are right here. And this is the CD3 cluster. Once this interaction is stabilized between TCR and MHC molecule, and also with the help of the core receptor, in this case it's CD4, a signal is generated to, which allows the TCR to either differentiate or respond to the signal. So this is the more detailed view of PCR MHC interaction. So next we will see how antigen presenting cells activate the T cells. That will be the subject of our next module.